Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. As you might know, pattern are a topic that's near and dear to my heart in Studio One because I love electronic music of all kinds and uh, particularly then it's very useful to have these amazing features that pattern can provide you with. And I've covered that in several videos already. I'm going to link you a few in the video here. But one feature that I want to focus on specifically today is how you can use pattern even if you don't end up using them. What? Let's find out. So I prepared a little uh, acid techno demo here. Uh, let's have a listen. Well, you get the idea. And I was thinking maybe we could work with some kind of driving melody lead here. And I'm feeling a little bit, you know, lacking for inspiration. So maybe Studio One can help us come up with an idea with all the amazing features that we have available. For example, on this uh, lead sound here that I have prepared, I could just uh, go ahead and do a double click um, to come up with a new instrument part. And maybe I just uh, draw in a few notes here, like a repetitive pattern, uh, sort of pattern, as we'll see, we're going to turn that into a pattern in a moment and um, use it as a starting point for our idea. So just going to enter a couple of... Um, 16th notes here, maybe one here and one here and then one up here. Yeah, it should work just fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that by hitting D a bunch of times. And now I get a repetitive, sort of driving, but also very stale and boring pattern like so. But that's always just the same thing over and over again. And now we can convert this into a pattern to give it a little bit more of life, you know, a bit of unpredictability and yeah, make the entire thing more interesting that way. So to do that, you just right click the part that we just created together and you go to instrument parts and then convert part to pattern. And now this still sounds the exact same as it did before. <laughs> But now we have some inherent advantages. For example, we get a completely new tab here if we click on this little automation lane button for repeat, delay and probability. Those are really the bread and butter, if you ask me when working with pattern. And we'll dive into repeat and delay with my next example, but let's stick to probability for now. A super easy way to make this more interesting and driving is to just hold down shift and then set the probability with a left click from 100% to maybe around 50%, 51% or something like that. And this means that the probability of this note actually triggering is just 50%. Uh, so we get, you know, a pattern that's always rhythmically shifting. Let's extend the pattern a little bit. That's what we can do by simply dragging out here. Fruity Loops users and people from other DAWs that have pattern might be well familiar with this. This is because the pattern is looping within itself, so it repeats over and over. This is not something that would happen when you do this with a regular MIDI part. And let's have a listen. So much more interesting, right? But now we get something that's random every time and we might want to have a bit more certainty in a production. So what I like to do is select the pattern and hit G on our keyboard. At that moment, all that randomness is being baked in to the instrument part. So we're back in the classic instrument part and now we just use the pattern as a sort of starting point and now we can take things from here. Search for one of the randomness results that we like the best and then edit that a little bit down. It's just a great starting point whenever you feel stuck. Another fantastic way to work with pattern or to convert a part into a pattern is when working with percussion and hi-hats and things like that because you can really easily add amazing polyrhythms and ratchets and slight offset delays to make everything feel a bit more human. Let me show you how that's done. So we double click once again here to add an Impact XT part in this case. And here I have a hi-hat sample. It's just a regular hi-hat sample that I've prepared. I hold down Command on a Mac or Control on Windows, and I'm just going to drag out from left to right. And this will result in a 16 uh, note hi-hat pattern because my grid is currently set to 16th. And uh, it would sound like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
but that's always the same, right? It's not really that interesting. And that's why I like to convert it into a pattern. Even if I'm going back into a part, I can of course also stay in a pattern if I like, but right click and here I find it in the recent items, convert part of pattern. It was here in the instrument parts. Otherwise you can also assign it to a hotkey of course. And now we get some amazing possibilities. For example, we can set repeats. Whenever I set a repeat, that step will re-trigger with the current grid setting. So if I have a 16th resolution here, then this step will play two notes in the span of one 16th note because it's re-triggering once. So that would be two 32 notes. If I do two repeats, then it would play two additional times within a 16th note and so forth. So this is really nice to get some of these trappy kind of hi-hats that you also hear in these rap and hip-hop productions a lot. Like that, right? And that can be a little bit annoying to draw these in um, in a classic instrument part. And then what I like to do is just reduce the step length of this hi-hat to maybe just eight steps or something like that. So I don't have to, you know, draw in all these repeats over and over again. And because this is a pattern, this is just repeating within itself over and over again. You can use the same technique uh, for some awesome polyrhythms. If you had another element, you could have that repeat maybe just five times and um, then they always play at a different point and it just adds a ton of groove and a sort of randomness that's a little bit more predictable and a bit more structured, so to say. What I also like to do is just set a delay slightly different. This is like a micro offset for each note just to make the hi-hat's not so perfectly quantized, otherwise the entire beat sounds so robotic. Sounds like just more human that way. And uh, once I'm done, I can of course, once again, convert back into a classic MIDI part if I prefer to work in this view. And uh, so we really just took advantage of the pattern briefly. <laughs> And within just a couple minutes, we just got a way more interesting beat. Thank you for watching.